Ladies and gentlemen, Cedric Kushner Promotions in association with the Grand Casino, Tunica, Mississippi, CKSN, and Corona Beer, La Cerveza Más Fina presents this heavyweight explosion contest scheduled for four rounds. Your referee for this event from Biloxi, Mississippi, Fred Steinwinder III. Introducing in the red corner, wearing the black trunks, weighing in at 213 pounds, a professional record that reads one victory, two defeats, one draw, the lone win coming by way of knockout. He hails from Waynesville, Missouri. Here is Eric Jackson. Jackson. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the dark green trunks, weighing in at 212 pounds. He is undefeated in four professional bouts, all four wins coming by way of knockout. He boxes out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. Here is Ismael Kone. Kone. Four rounds, heavyweights. Well, Kevin, as they're given the instructions here, Fred Steinwinder the third. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves come out by. I think that Eric Jackson has a, one of these fighters at heavyweight that has a very deceptive record, in spite of the fact that he's one, two, and one. That one draw came against Talmadge Griffiths, who's a uh, oddly right, enough go. trained out of the stable of Steve Munisteri that Chuck McGregor's affiliated with. McGregor working the corner of Jackson tonight. And uh, I think Kone may be a little bit surprised by Mr. Jackson. I think it's just one of those deceptive one and two records, you know, that uh, heavyweights might have early on in their career. Of course, Kone coming in tonight four and zero. Part of that uh, Swedish head, connection that uh, Angelo Dundee works with tonight. Uh, Dundee, corner man and uh, co-trainer Louis Lagerman here tonight, working the corner of Kone. Of course, Kone's in the green. Jackson in the black shorts. This is what happens sometimes is that a guy like Eric Jackson well, gets in the ring to start. Um, gets in the some guys that actually can fight. They're pretty decent in his career. And those fights kind of make your break. But I believe they make you because early in your career you get a loss to a good fighter. Okay, it only helps you because you've been there. You have to worry about getting beat. You got that out the way. The confidence out the way of never getting, losing a fight. So actually, Eric Jackson can, add, Jackson can actually benefit from this rather than Four Jackson, 32 years of age, started his pro career late in 1996, had two fights in 96, and one KO and, and one NSF fight, and then uh, took off two years, came back, lost the four-round decision, fought the draw with Griffiths. And I'm telling you, that draw with Griffiths tells Watch me a lot to be able to come back head. after that layoff. Griffiths, a big prospect, trains up in Colorado Springs with Dick Wood, and as we mentioned, part of that uh, stable. That Steve Munisteri runs a fine heavyweights, and uh, I want to one thing that Ishmael Cohen is doing now. He's doing one thing very obviously wrong. He's pulling straight back in a line. You see, he'll throw a punch and he'll pull straight back in a line. Oh, but that line was a good line as he dropped the big uppercut in and buckled the legs of Jackson, who's back on the ropes right now, trying to cover up and trying to tie up right now, and hasn't trying to get a hold of Cohen. Watch how low that left now is dropping to Jackson as his legs got buckled there. Still plenty of time left here, almost a minute to go in round number four. Cone really teeing off on him now. Big punching power, four knockouts and four Don't wins by Cone. Let go, Let Jackson go, trying to survive what's now become a shaky half of round number one. Kevin, his legs aren't under him at all. They're not, right now he's just being aggressive, fighting on willpower. One thing about Cone, he tell you he's a small heavyweight, but he's got heavy hands. It's very strange. He hits very hard to be a small heavyweight. Not a big guy, about 5'11", or maybe six feet even. But I tell you, it's very hard for his weight. Cone came in tonight, 212. Jackson, 213. Jackson looks a lot bigger than Cone. I tell you, it's kind of strange. Got a lot of muscle definition, big chest, big legs. Well, take a look, though. Take a look at the thighs on Ismail Cone. Big. Big legs, a lot of strength coming from there as we come there to the end of round number one, a strong one for Kone. Let go of him, let go of him, let go, let go. Stop. Here's the bell, let's see the round one. Now you coach. Are you? <laughs>
Action from round number one, and we're going to take a look at the punch. It was the uppercut that really shook, followed by the left hook. Shook up Eric Jackson as Kone really dropped in a nice right uppercut there. Really nice. Short, short sharp uppercut. But you know why he didn't catch him with the last right hook? Because Kone opened up wide with it. He should have threw the uppercut and came shorter with the right hand and landed it. Instead, he got over inches. Round number two, scheduled for four on the explosion. Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Kevin Kelly. Ishmael Kone living in Pembroke Pines, Florida by way of Sweden originally. He's in the green shorts. Eric Jackson in the black. And Kevin, there was a beautiful uppercut followed by a left hook in the first round that really rocked Kone. And um, I mean, excuse me, the rock Jackson. But Kone, interestingly enough, didn't seem to sit down and show enough poise, maybe, to really where to, he looked like he was in a position to stop Jackson at that point. Well, he's young yet, you know, young in his career. He only got four fights, all knockouts. Right now, he's got to learn how to box, how to take his time, set punches up with your jab. That didn't happen this young no, career. No, you know, no, no, a lot of fighters, no, no, no. the egos get away of their boxing. Coney right now is trying to utilize, he's, he's practicing things, he's feeling things through. He's learning each fight, a learning session. Plan. Right now, he's taking a big learn, learn lesson in call, cleaning up your fighter. You get him hurt, you got him in a position where you can beat him, you take him out. Now you got to practice that. Kone, only five rounds of boxing prior to tonight in his professional career. First fight, a two round knockout. He started his pro career in June of 98. Everything after that's been first round knockouts. This is his second go of 99. His last fight came on April 15th, stopping Joe Vega in one round down at the Miccosukee Reservation. Last fight for Jackson, he got stopped in five by Tomage Griffiths that same night, April 15th. This is his second go of 99. Well, a big thing with Jackson, he had a bad start, and confidence could be broken. He might not be as confident as he wants to be sometimes. Well, in this fight here, if he catches Kone with a punch or something, and Kone wobbles a little bit, they build his confidence up. But as long as Kone, right now, Ismail Kone, is hammering him, his confidence is going to remain broken. I don't push him down. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, Fred Steinwinder, oh, warning for pushing down to Jackson. I see certain things that Ismail Kone has to work on, like that reach right there. Reaching overhand with the right hand, his legs got crossed. He actually turned southpaw from it. There's certain things he's got to work on. A little bit more control. I can see he's still a little green as a professional. Don't lean on him. Don't, don't work out of it. That's why his heavyweight sports is very good for kids coming up. They get a chance to view themselves, watch their mistakes, what they should do. His leg work is kind of strange, Kevin. It's almost like he's a converted southpaw. He seems to to want to go up on the other leg, throw a right hand lead there, and he's getting his legs twisted. It's almost like he had fought southpaw in the amateurs and they're turning him around. His, his footwork doesn't seem right. Well, he could be converted, or he just his balance is off. You know, his balance, you know, balance could be suffering right now. This is things that have to be worked on. And if he's converted, they need to work on him being lefty and righty at the same time. Well, he's about to go someplace he's never gone before, oddly enough, and that's round number three as we come to the end of the second round on Heavyweight Explosion. Back in the corner there with Ishmael Cohn. Kone is actually the proper pronunciation, Kevin. It's a Swedish name. No relation to David Cohn of the New York Yankees. Name is spelled the same. Spelled K-O-N-E. Although, oddly enough, on the back of his shorts, it says C-O-N-E, and I think that was a typo, but they didn't send the shorts back. Yeah. Louis Lagerman making sure that his up-and-coming heavyweight is ready to go into a third round, and... Uh, some places we mentioned that he's never been before as we look over at Eric Jackson seeming to go into what I'd have to uh, call a survival mode right now, Kevin. Round three. Round number three, Ishmael Cohn, as, as odd as it may sound for a young heavyweight, some place where he's never been before. Three of his fights ending in one round. Another fight ending in two as he's 4-0 coming in tonight undefeated. 
Eric Jackson one two and one one win by way of knockout that coming way back in January of 96 when he made his pro debut he took off two years the holding, the between holding. 96 and 98 and uh, Kone looking a little arm weary right now Kevin throwing well, more looping punches his punches aren't as short and crisp as they were in the earlier rounds. I think he's don't used to is knocking head, guys out. Head, he's got to learn to punch on. light he's and hard. Down. Set the punches up. Everything don't it's have to be hard. He throw some light punches and then he throw some hard punches. Tony, like I said, he's early in his career. He has four victories, four knockouts, uh, and he wants a fifth knockout tonight. And he may be on his way to that. Regular, Jackson dropped his left punch, right over the top, back, followed back, by a left go. hook by Kone. Had Jackson moving backwards. Interestingly enough, Jackson dropped a couple of body shots in there that Kone certainly didn't like, and uh, the body attack has been something that he needs to possibly employ more. But as he goes downstairs to try to do that, right, is he playing possum or did he hurt? Get hurt there. He was playing possum. You know, even he might have got buzzed for a second there, but I think it was more possum than anything. His legs look okay. Uh, one thing that Jackson does wrong here is that he stands on his heels if you watch his back leg. He's on the heel of his foot, which when when Kone hits him, it even looks more dramatic than it really is. Don't hold him, don't hold him, let go of him. Come on, let go of him, work. Kone trying to take a breather as we're a little more than halfway gone here in round number three. Keep your head up here, no. Well, like I said, there's some things he's got to work on, Kone. He's got to work on when his finishing skills, that open hand right that he throws. It's a little amateurish, a little bit wild. Don't hold him, don't hold he needs to work on straightening it out, throwing a straight punch. The punch that knocks men out are the ones they don't see. That's an obvious punch. So there you go, it's very obvious. Now, if he would have threw his short, okay, a six inch punch like the famous Joe Lewis, he might have knocked him out. Tony throwing looping punches right now and uh, very seeming arm a little arm. Yeah, arm weary was exactly what I was going to say, Kevin, as we got 45 seconds to go in the round. Trying to go don't downstairs, do some body work. Breathing heavy now through the mouth is Kone. And I think he does Kone. need to work on his pacing and his stamina. Jackson about ready to spit the mouthpiece out there as he don't backs hold, up into the ropes. Hold. And we've got two very tired young heavyweights here right now. Although in the case of Jackson, 32 years of age, I'd have a hard time calling him old compared to the 22-year-old, excuse me, 24-year-old Ishmael Kone. Let's go. And or Kone, depending on which pronunciation. Well, Kone. The last explosion, so he was Kone. I know that. Tonight he's Kone. And I'll go with Mark Biro's Mark interpretation of the name. Because I trust Mark. We're taking a look there. Louis Lagerman trying to keep Ishmael Cohn fresh for the fourth round here and uh, maybe keep his guy from losing his four bout knockout streak. As we begin round number four, fourth and final round here on the explosion. No knockdowns in the fight. Ishmael Cohn, he's in the dark green. Eric Jackson in the black shorts. It's been all uh, Cone at this point, or Cone as they're saying, and as we keep switching back and forth, they're very uncomfortable calling him Cone, Kevin. I don't know about you, but uh, I gave all three rounds to Cone at this point. I got a 30-27. I didn't give uh, Eric J Jackson one round. I, I believe that right now. He's a survival mode. He has spurts, bits and spurts sometimes where he uh, will throw hard punches. Cone just walked into a straight left and got buckled. And he's going to have to be real careful here. If I was him at this point, rather than trying to take Jackson out here in round number four, I might say I got three rounds in the bank. My stamina is not right here tonight. I'm in a place where I've never been before, which is round number four. I think I'm going to cruise and maybe throw this round away. Look at him. He's hopping around here, and he's starting to get tagged pretty good here by Jackson, although he just countered and backed Jackson up. What about the fact, is this a good thing if this knockout streak comes to the end? For Kone, is this the best thing that could happen to him at this point so he's not a headhunter? Actually, it's not. Uh, because the bottom line is that he needs to go home and watch his tape and realize that 
Every time he throws a punch, there's a homeboy on the punch trying to knock the man out. He's a go home. He has a very good jab, Coney. And I notice when he utilizes it, it lands. The problem with it is when he's trying to knock you out, he don't throw it. There go the jab, but there go back to the, the, the haymaker. Right now, if you pop the jab, you gotta work for a knockout. Knockouts just don't happen. You gotta work for them. Then you can set them up, then you get your knockout. I think right now, going to this is perfect what he needs in his career right now. There he goes. Every punch he throws got knockout written all over it. So he can't get the knockout. He know Eric Jackson already knows what he's gonna do. So Eric Jackson's best bet that he can do is trying to counter him. The few times that Jackson sticks that jab out there, Kone walks right into it, Kevin. Because he's too busy being offensive and not worrying about defense. See, when you're being offensive, you can't be defensive at the same time. You're open somewhere. And that's what Eric Jackson is capitalizing on. Because right now, Kone is all worried about hitting him and not making a miss to hit him. He should make a miss first, then count him. Somebody's mouthpiece is on the floor. I think it's Jackson's. Brett Steinweiner looking for a low on the action, and I wouldn't call that a low on the action. You see, I wouldn't stop things right there, Kevin. No, there's too much action going on there. Punch Plus, I wouldn't stop it because I don't want to get hit one of those punches myself. Nevertheless, Fred Steinweiner, the third, stop in the action to replace the mouthpiece and rinse it out on Eric Jackson. We're coming near the end of the fourth round, and Kone comes in wide open and eats a left-right combination from Jackson. That's one thing about boxing. At any given time, a guy can win the fight cleanly, easily, and then get caught with a punch, and it can be over. And Kone has to think about those things. When he got the fight in the bag, lay the last round off, you know, use your, utilize your jab, use other punches. Stop trying to get the knockout. Well, it looks like the knockout streak's gonna go into the books as four straight and one win by decision for Ishmael Kone. But I, you know, Kevin, I can't help but think that this is a good thing for him. Go to distance, go to four rounds, stop being a headhunter and go back, study the tape and say, okay, I didn't get the knockout. Here's why I didn't get it. And if I want to continue getting knockouts, here's what I'm going to have to do. That's what's good about TV today, that you have fights on tape. You can watch him go home. He realized that he made a few mistakes that didn't help his performance, but hurt his performance. So, you know, what he does right is not good right now. What he does wrong is what hurts, what hurts him. So he can learn, unlearn from this experience, only get better from this experience, and realize what he didn't do, not what he did right. Eric Jackson, what can we say about him tonight other than he showed a good chin? He took some big shots from Ishmael Cohn, but he's a fighter who's 32 years of age, had that two-year layoff between 1996 and 1998. Does it look like there's anything he can do to improve this, or should he just, or is he an opponent status, and that's the way it's gonna be? Well, right as, right as now, people watching, yes, he looks like an opponent to everybody. I mean, him losing another fight here, I mean, being one in three, hey, Anything's possible. Well, we're going to get the official decision from our ring announcer, Mark Biro, and he'll let us know what I think we already know. It sounds like a unanimous one for Ishmael Cohn. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges at ringside, Kevin Phillips, David Taranto, and Paul Sita, have scored the bout 40-36 to the winner and still undefeated, Ismael Fone. Fone. All right, Ishmael Kone improves to 5-0, and going the distance for the first time. Eric Jackson drops down to 1-3, and still one decision by draw, and a uh, good performance by Kone. I'm sure he'll study these tapes, and uh, as always, a good Angelo Dundee-trained fighter along with Louis Lagerman. We look forward to seeing him again on the explosion.